Now, I know I've told this story before. I looked it up. It was uh, a p during Epiphany in 2017. So I apologize that you're hearing it again, but it works for, uh, it, it, it works for today and where I want to go. So. Uh, where I served before I, I, I came here uh, 10 years ago was the Cathedral of the Incarnation in Garden City on Long Island. Uh, it was built in the late 1800s and has a rather tall steeple, and on the top of the steeple there is a cross that is lit up. And it was <clears throat> lit up from early in the time of the, of the cathedral. The problem was that Long Island wasn't really developed uh, in, the early 19, in the early 1900s, and the, the, the cathedral is eight miles from the shore. And the, with, without all the ambient light that we have today, the ships coming into New York Harbor could see that light and they thought that was where the shore was. The problem was, as I said, eight miles inland. <clears throat> so the department of whomever or whatever went to the cathedral and said, could you turn out your light, please? Uh, because we don't want any ships to run aground. And we're putting in a new lighthouse, and once that it, that's in, we'll let you know. So they put in lighthouses and, and, and beacons or whatever to get ships into New York Harbor, and the cathedral could put their light back on. And that they did. And then during World War II, during World War II, when everybody else was told to turn off their lights and pull their blinds, uh, the cathedral was told, please leave the cross lit. <coughs> because Mitchell Field was just a couple miles down, down the road, and Mitchell Field was an air base, and soldiers were returning home, particularly wounded soldiers, and the, the cross, they, the pilots could see it lit up, and they knew to aim for the cross, and then they'd find Mitchell Field. So they were told to leave their, their light on as a, a beacon to guide people home. I mention this story today because light has something to do with our second lesson, the epistle to uh, the epistle of James. And it, it was a passing line at the very beginning, but it gets at the heart, I think, of what James was, was writing about. This lesson, by the way, used to be read on um, Thanksgiving. Uh, for was lo long in the, uh, the, the sign for Thanksgiving Day. Uh, and in 2007, when we switched to the Revised Common Lectionary, they got rid of this lesson, just one of the things that went with that lectionary change. Uh, but great lesson, um, as, it, as it is, a wonderful passage from, from the epistles. Anyway, that's an aside. Um, you can see where I stand on that one. It's like my All Saints Day rant, which you get every once in a while, and we got rid of the let us now sing praises of our ancestors and their generations, but an aside. Anyway, so James is writing. He's writing to an audience that <clears throat> understood Jewish culture, but really understood Greek philosophy as well. And so he, James begins the lesson referring to God as the father of lights. And he, and he, and he refers to him as the source of all goodness, the source of all that, that comes to us. Every generous act of giving, every perfect gift, is from above, is, is from the source, from the Father of lights. Now, you need to try to remember back to your intro to philosophy days if you were a liberal arts major and had to take a philosophy class. And you'll remember Plato's cave. I see a few nods that you know Plato's cave. And what you'll remember from that, or what you might learn from that, is that the idea is that there is a cave, right? And somebody is looking into the cave and they see shadows on the cave, cave wall. And what, that's why I shouldn't move around. <laughs> I'm good, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> I see shadows on the cave, the cave wall. And the idea is that the, ca the, the, sh the shadows are caused by the light that is behind the beings. 
and the light is the source of all. Now in philosophy, we talk in Greek philosophy, they speak about the the source of all being. They'll they'll refer they'll call that source light or good or some idea or value or virtue. But the idea is that this is the source of all being and that we as humanity reflect the source of all being. And there we are casting our shadows on the, on the cave wall. And, base, and, and then our understanding is that as the shadows are in different sizes has to do with how much of the source is impacting us. And James says, every generous act of giving and every perfect gift is from above, from the Father of light, in whom there is no variation due to, uh, due to change or shadow. Meaning that, that we, there is no differentiation in our status of how much goodness God gives us. That we are all equally created good. That this Father of light shines through us is given to us, that source of being, that goodness in creation is given to us equally. That God loves us all equally. And that's what James is, is saying, saying right there the, in the very beginning. Which flips on the head the Greek understanding of the shadows and the variations due to change of how much is reflected from the person. The other thing that James does is, oh, by the way, we sang this in our, in our opening hymn, uh, in the third, third verse of our opening hymn, um, uh, to all life thou givest to both great and small, uh, that, that verse, verse there. I do forget things from time to time, Vince, so. Uh, I couldn't remember the whole, the whole line, the whole stanza. Anyway, uh, so, but with the second thing James does that flips this understanding on its head is that, um, is that in, in Greek philosophy, light was, 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 was then given back to the source. That how we lived our life was light and love and goodness and mercy and all the virtues, that was done to reflect back to the source. James flips it on its head and says, no, light doesn't reflect back to the source. Light reflects outward to others. Be doers of the word and not merely hearers. For hearers are like those who look at themselves in the mirror and upon walking away they forget what they, what they look like. But be doers, of, be doers of the word. So we hear the word of God, we hear of God's mercy, of God's goodness, of God's love, and then we go and we bear that light into the world. We go be doers of the word of God. Now this worked for about 1,500 years until Martin Luther came along. Martin Luther was angry at the Pope about Popish things, and he, he started the Protestant Reformation and he said, ever works righteous, the idea of works righteousness. So Luther calls the Epistle of James, which is a great epistle, he calls it an epistle of straw, because he says it's speaking about works righteousness, this idea that, that it takes works to get into heaven. And Calvin then comes along. Calvin we know is a little more stringent than Luther. Calvin comes along and actually says Luther's wrong. And other scholars have said Luther is wrong. He was so angry at the Pope about this and that the Roman Catholic Church was using this as an example for doing good works that he, he dismissed this letter. Calvin actually uses it as inspiration. Calvin, who is a French refugee living in Geneva, starts in Geneva, he starts in Geneva uh, hospitals and uh, schools and institutions for, to, that care for the neediest, saying that, that we are supposed to be doers of the word of God that we are to hear about the love and the light and the grace and the mercy of God, and then we are to do that. We are to act that way. We are to reflect that light to others, most particularly to the neediest, what James, call, what James calls the widows and orphans. Because in Roman society, in the society that James is writing, widows and orphans are about, about as low as you're going to get 
in, in stature. Um, you don't, orphans don't have parents, don't have children, don't have any claim in society, and widows don't have a husband to protect them. I saw posted in social media this week um, uh, something that said, uh, in defense of women, saying, she's somebody's daughter, she's somebody's, somebody's granddaughter, um, the, and the, the, it was all crossed out and it just said, she's somebody. And the answer is what Christian faith teaches us is that the widows and the orphans are somebody, too. That they also have the light of God in them. And God's goodness is in them, and we are to serve them. The question before us today is who are the neediest in our society that we need to serve? Where is it that we need to shine the light of God? Where is it that we need to be beacons of hope and joy and love? St. Paul's has a long history of doing that, a long history of serving this community and serving well, well beyond this, this community throughout the world and making the light and love of God known. The call to us today is how do we now, in 2024, how are we called to be doers of the word? How are we called? to care for the least among us? How are we called to make God's love? How are we called to shine our light, to lead people home to God? Amen.